You're listening to an Airwave Media Podcast. My friend Dr. Lex, the host of the Lux Sci Podcast, is based out of Greece these days. She was asking, what is the Arts Madness Tournament I've been talking about in the intro to every episode lately? I guess for those listeners who aren't based out of the United States, a little context might be helpful. In the United States, every March, there is a giant college basketball tournament called March Madness. 64 different teams compete in a single elimination tournament until it's narrowed down to just one ultimate winner. Years ago, I found students in my classroom really enjoyed uh, exploring art history by looking at and evaluating and voting for their favorite artists in a similarly styled tournament. Since I started doing the podcast, I opened it up to allow all my listeners to enjoy the fun of looking at and judging all different artists. So this season, I'm releasing a mini episode every day in the run up to the tournament to give you a little information about a lot of different artists. I feel like who art ed? Who art ed? Mr. Wood art ed me. Either way, it, it's a big, it works on so many levels. I know. I thought it's a great start. Welcome to Who Arted, where we explore visual arts in an audio medium. I'm your host, Kyle Wood, and today we're going to be looking at Paul Cezanne. Now, if you're listening on Amazon Music, Spotify, or any of the other platforms that support episode-specific cover art, you should be able to see the image as you're listening. Also, just as a fun little aside, in the first round of the tournament this year, Paul Cezanne is up against Roy Lichtenstein, and if you listened to my episode um, yesterday about Lichtenstein, I pulled a quote where Roy Lichtenstein actually name-dropped Paul Cezanne, saying that art since Cezanne has become extremely romantic and unrealistic. Uh, Lichtenstein was kind of throwing some shade at Cezanne. As he was saying, pop art looks out at the world. It doesn't look like a painting of something. Keep that in the back of your head as you listen in to the rest of this episode. Paul Cezanne was born January 19th, 1839. His father was a banker. Um, He had actually co-founded a bank. So the family was pretty well off. Uh, It seems like he had a pretty good childhood. He went to college bourbon where... He became friends with other creative types. Uh, Emile Zola, for example, Zola went at, went on to become a writer, um, and uh, Baptistine Baye, who would teach about optics and acoustics, and you know a little bit of foreshadowing there. Cezanne's father wanted Paul to eventually take over the family business and run the bank. Initially, he was kind of going along with that. So Paul Cezanne studied the law, but he just wasn't really into it. He continued studying art on the side. In 1859, um, Paul Cezanne's father bought an estate, translates to the House of the Wind, Jeanne de Buffon, or something along those lines. Forgive me, I'm not a French speaker. And Cezanne loved the place. He lived and worked there for years. He loved painting the house and the trees around it. Uh, In 1860, he actually got permission to paint big murals in the drawing room. He painted the four seasons, but as a joke, he signed them Ingress and dated them 1811. At the time, there was a work uh, Ingress had completed in 1811 on display nearby. So eventually, Paul Cezanne fully dedicates himself to art. He did that at the encouragement of Zola and others. Um, And this, for a while, caused a little bit of a falling out with his father. But his dad eventually came around, but only after Paul agreed to, like, dedicate himself earnestly to art. Cezanne inherited a massive amount of money. He went to inherit like 400,000 francs. So he never really had to worry about money, but his father wanted him to be working hard and not just, you know, laying back and resting on the inheritance. And from everything I've read, Cezanne took that seriously. He applied to Beaux-Arts 
He was rejected, though, so he ended up at the Académie Suisse, where he met Pizarro, among others. Pizarro was about 10 years older at the time. He mentored him, and Cezanne kind of fell in with the avant-garde artists of that time. And the avant-garde at that time was largely impressionistic. So in 1863, he's working with other artists. You know, he's getting to know people like Renoir, Monet. And in 1863, people like the Impressionists, who were just tired of being constantly rejected by the Paris Salon, they actually set up the Salon de Refuses. Again, forgive me on the pronunciation. It translates to the Salon of the Rejected. They set it up right next to the official Paris Salon. And that's where works like Monet, Manet, Pizarro, and Cezanne exhibited. Now, as I look at Cezanne's work... The thing that really strikes me is the way that it feels like a study. His work is always about these technical aspects in my mind. I I see the brush strokes defining the planes. I see the way he's experimenting with colors and the way that I am so consciously aware that I am not looking at a landscape. I am looking at his interpretation of the landscape. I'm looking at how he has translated those natural elements into a painted scene. I can see how he's using the brushstrokes to define the different planes. I mean, Paul Cezanne famously wanted to try to reduce everything to the sphere, the cylinder, the cone, and the cube. And as I look at his work, one of the famous ones that we talked about in the full episode, which coincidentally I recorded with Dr. Lex from the Lux Sci podcast, we were talking about Mont Saint Victoire, which Stazan painted several copies. He painted this mountain 30 times. It was big and looming large over his hometown. And it it was something that he returned to over and over and over again. And I think what's interesting is in his paintings, we see almost this synthesis of these different views coming together. And that's what I always remember about Cezanne's work. My, My favorite stuff by him would probably be his still lives. But there's this There's this step forward in painting that we see with Cezanne that other artists really ran with where it becomes so much about the process. We're looking at various subjects, but I feel like in a large way, the true subject is painting itself and the process itself laid out on the canvas. You know, he's kind of a painter's painter. And that's why so many great artists fell in love with Cezanne, and we see his influence echoing through paintings and art history up through today. And of course, if you want to learn more, check the show notes. I'm going to put a couple of links in there, including the link to the full episode we recorded on Cezanne. This concludes this week's episode of Who Arted, part of the Airwave Media Podcast Network. If you found this tolerable, please leave a rating or review on your favorite podcast app. You can find images of the work being discussed this week and every week on social media at Who Arted Podcast on Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. And of course, on the website, whoartedpodcast.com. Podcast done.